Welcome to another exciting edition of the Million Dollar Peddlers. I'm Paper Goy, and today we're going to talk about a deal. And basically, the deal is there's always stuff to buy out there. Um, I know we've preached it before, and we've preached before that the buying is easier than the selling, which it definitely is. But I'm going to tell you about a situation that I ran into, and I did not take advantage of it because I'm not in the situation where I need to take advantage to it or of it. But if you're a young person starting out or somebody just starting out in the business, it's something to look out for. So I went to a sale, and I, I really only went to the sale because one of my friends who's also in the business contacted me, and I, I told him about a couple of sales that were going on, and I said, don't waste your time because there's nothing there for him. Uh, because I'd already went to him. And he said to me, hey, you might want to check out this other sale uh, because there are some st uh, books and things like that down in the basement that you might like. So I guess that's lesson number one is make a lot of contacts in the business. Uh, I saved him some driving and he gave me a tip on a uh, sale that he'd already been to. So he had already taken what he needed out of it. And, you know, through the tip to me, I'd helped him out as well by saving him some driving. And there have been times before where he has said to me, hey, there's a sale at such and such a place you really need to go. And I've helped him out the same way. So I guess lesson number one is do make contacts in the business and make sure you, you feed them every once in a while and they'll feed you every once in a while and it will work out really, really well for both. Because even being told not to go to a sale, which has happened before, he's told me before, yeah, I went to such and such a sale and I bought all the paper items that were there. Well, that saves me because now I'm not driving down or hoping to find something. So I find something else to do. Um, so there's there's definitely advantages to, to teaming up with other people and, and helping each other out. But I went to the sale and I went down in the basement and they had books for 50 cents a book, which is very low to start with at a sale. Usually books are a dollar for soft covers, two dollars for hard covers. And they had a bookcase full of books. And it was half price day. So I'm paying a quarter a book. You can't go wrong at that. So I, I made a nice little pile of books, things like that. Brought it up there. And then all of a sudden the prices start going all over the place. Well, this was free. This is this. This is that. So I'm still not exactly sure where they came up with prices at. But I ended up paying something around like 17 cents a book when everything was said and done. Um, which is just phenomenally cheap. Uh, you know, got some magazines, some books, some brochures, things like that. Some, some decent stuff that I went and picked through. And I, I turned to my stepson at that moment, at, you know, after we left, I turned to him and I said, if you ever want to get in the business and you do go to a sale like that, you got a couple of dollars in your pocket, there you go. At that point, you then say to them, hey, you've got a bookcase full of stuff in the basement. I really don't need the stuff you know, but how much for all of it? And probably you could walk away with an entire bookcase full of stuff for $25, maybe $30, something rather like that. And I guarantee you there are some $25 items that are still left up there. Obviously, I don't know what they were. Or I would have bought them for 17 cents a piece. But there are very good items that are left just because you could have 100 people go through and there's still good stuff left because not everybody knows everything perfect opportunity so if you're just starting out always have a little bit of extra money on you and when you see that somebody is desperate to sell which which they are because they're cleaning the house out because they want to sell the house the books will probably just wind up in a dumpster unfortunately or or donated to goodwill and a lot of these probably aren't the kind of things that goodwill would want um anything is better than nothing in those cases and you come in and as long as you don't need to buy and as you've listened to us before you know that the buying is easier than the selling so you never need to buy you're in the position of strength and let's say that you go down and you look at the entire bookcase full of stuff and you look there and you say geez you know there's 500 books here at you know at a quarter a piece you're still talking you know 125 dollars and they say oh 75 for everything and you just kind of look around and you say yeah, I don't have any boxes, it's a lot of work, it's a hot day, I don't want to lug it all up, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. They'll lower their price because they know that the $50 or the $40 or the $30 they get from you beats throwing it all into a dumpster. 
and you can end up buying it. And a lot of times what will end up happening too is, especially if you're on a house call, is they'll end up throwing other things in as well. Stuff that's nearby and they'll say, hey, do you want this? Do you want this? And the correct answer is always yes. Because when you get home, who knows? The thing that they threw in could be better than the stuff that you're buying. Um, but as I said to the stepson, there's so much money to be made out there. You just give them the $30, $20, $40, whatever they ask. If they ask too much, you just walk on by because there'll be another sale. And you bring it all home and you sort it all out and you start listing the stuff and stuff will sell. You'll be out of your investment within a week to a week and a half. I can guarantee that um, unless it's absolute garbage, which this wasn't absolute garbage. You could definitely find things in there that were sellable. A uh, lot stuff out as need be. Do whatever you need. Move it on out. And within a month, you've turned your $40, $50 into $200. And if you're doing this as a side job, suddenly you've got a couple of hundred dollars to reinvest in your business. The other major advantage of buying things in a lot like that, and again, you find somebody or other who really wants to sell, you can do very well for yourself. The other advantage is you've just bought 500 books, 1,000 books, how many of her books you happen to be buying, you've researched all of them as you're listing them. And you're, you see what sells quickly and you see what's valuable. Well, now you're beginning to hone in and you're beginning to get an area of expertise. Uh, there were a lot of construction magazines and that sort of thing there. You know, I bought a few catalogs, stuff like that. Well, now you pick up those construction magazines and you say, hey, I didn't realize this, but this magazine is a good one. This one's not. And then a lot of times in the business, knowing what not to buy is as important as knowing what to buy. So keep your eyes open. There are great deals out there. And you really don't need a lot of money to get to get a start in this business. You know, I bet fifty dollars would have walked away with all of the books that they had. I, I did, again, I wasn't in a position where I wanted them or needed them, but if I were just starting out, it would have been a tremendous opportunity. And when they come along, be ready to pounce on them, be ready to buy them and list them, and be ready to learn, and be ready to make money. Until next time. <laughs>